We have been in this series, Take Heart. I've really enjoyed preaching this series. So far, we've talked about taking heart in God's limitless love, taking heart in prayer's role in our lives, taking heart in God's goodness of provision, and taking heart in the hope that comes through endurance. As I indicated already today, we're going to talk about taking heart in encouragement. Taking heart in encouragement. I propose to you today that this scripture gives us many points, but one that we can take out of it for sure is that the gospel cannot be hindered by our personal circumstances, by our struggles. So we should take heart that our work for the kingdom of God is always worth it. God's gospel will not be hindered by our problems. If that is true, we should encourage others and be encouraged ourselves to take heart in our difficult circumstances and know that we can still be useful in the kingdom effort. Now, to be clear, when I say take heart in your difficulties, (laughs) I don't mean you have to enjoy them. You don't have to enjoy difficult times to take heart in them. To take heart in knowing that in spite of them, and maybe sometimes even through them, God's gospel is going to proliferate. It's going to spread. Take heart in the midst of your struggles because we still have the ability to allow the gospel to work through us and in us regardless of how bad things are. The world is never so heavy that a healthy dose of love can't lighten the load. Our problems are not of God, nor do they stop God. God's love is relentless. It is relentless. And so God's kingdom will come, and God's will will be done, given enough time. Here is a problem with this as I see it. And it comes around how we view our problems, right? I'm going to talk about one specific set of problems right now. Not all of them, but a specific one that is important to the church because I've been seeing this more and more and more over the past, I don't know, seven, eight years. It's been a thing, but it's been a real big problem over the past seven, eight, nine, ten years. We often equate the problems brought about by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with problems brought about by our own value systems. The struggles we face, especially in the church, but this is actually true for anybody. This is true for anybody. Right? The struggles we face, we often conflate them, especially in the church, with people not wanting to hear about Jesus when really they just don't want to hear about our value systems not based on Jesus. What I'm talking about here is the persecution complex that certain circles of Christianity love to espouse in this country. You only have to watch the news for like 10 minutes to see this seething through everything. But especially if you listen to any church stuff, the church in this country, especially just in the West in general, but especially in this country, loves to talk about how the world isn't letting us do certain things. We're persecuted. We are not dying for our faith, y'all. We are just not in that kind of danger, so we are not being persecuted. But we love to act in unloving ways and then complain that the world is persecuting us because they demand that an organization that claims to be based on Jesus actually act like Jesus. We live into value systems based on laws, social customs, and ritualistic regulations that often do not amplify the compassionate self-sacrificing love of Jesus and then cry out that everyone else is persecuting us. We live our lives, we live our values, we live our values while slapping a Jesus label on them and then get upset when the world calls BS. Just because you slap a Jesus label on something doesn't make it Jesus Christ. 
If the trouble we get into, if the struggles we endure are because we stand with the poor, the oppressed, the hungry, and the downtrodden, then we can rightly say we are suffering for Jesus. But if we are suffering because we have made bad choices, if we are suffering because we want to keep a hold of our power and privilege, if we suffer because the walls of our exclusivity are crumbling under the weight of relentless love, well, then we are not suffering for Christ. We are suffering because we refuse to follow the way of Christ. And that is a whole different thing. But here's the good news. Here is some good news in that. If you find yourself feeling pinched right now. The good news of the inclusive, all-encompassing love of Jesus cannot be extinguished and will proliferate through us and sometimes in spite of us anyway. No matter how bad we are at this discipleship thing, God finds a way. I side with pastor and speaker Rob Bell when he says, Love wins. I believe that with my whole heart. No matter how bad we are at this Christianity thing, love will find a way, anyway. Now, that doesn't mean we don't do anything. That doesn't mean we don't live into this. But that just means that it isn't all on us. A lot of it is we have a partnership with God, absolutely. But even where we fail, God will not. So, how then should we respond to the good troubles caused by the good news? How should we believe and act when we stand with the people Jesus stood with? Well, like Timothy here, we should be encouraged when the problems we face are because of Jesus. That's what Timothy's being encouraged to do right here, is to stand strong in the face of of persecutions that will come when you stand with Jesus for real. When you're out there proclaiming the gospel of Jesus and not the gospel of such and such church or such and such politician. When we get in trouble for living like Jesus, we must be encouraged. We must be encouraged. When we get into what Representative John Lewis calls good trouble, the late Representative John Lewis. If you don't know who that is, go look him up. Be encouraged that there have been thousands, millions of people who truly suffered for expressing the limitless love of Jesus. Be encouraged. If you're suffering for the gospel, for real suffering for the gospel, you come from a long lineage of people who caused what civil rights leader representative John Lewis called that good trouble. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged in the knowledge that we are never too young. Boys, you are not too young. And the oldest person in this room or watching us online right now, you are not too old. Be encouraged that we are never too young or too old to get into good trouble for Jesus. And I know I'm possibly opening up a can of worms with my three boys right now where they're like, he said we could get in trouble. We'll have a conversation real quick about what good trouble is. If you've been listening at all, good trouble is standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves or need a little extra help. It's standing up to the bullies of this world. And if that gets you in trouble, I will never be upset. I'll go pay your bail money myself. Be encouraged in the knowledge that we are never too young or too old. Children were on the front lines of school integration. They were the foot soldiers of school integration. Yes, the adults in their lives were the ones making the laws change, but the kids that walked into those buildings were the ones who put themselves in harm's way every day. I listened to a group of speakers yesterday who were cousins, a white lady and a black lady. They found out they were cousins through slavery. Right? Listen to them. And the black woman shared a story about she, um, being one of the first 23 people in her area to integrate 
and how that caused them to be targets all the time. She ended up getting sexually assaulted in the auditorium shortly after that integration. I'm not saying that we need to put our kids in harm's way. What I am saying is you are not ever too young or too old to get into good trouble for Jesus, to be foot soldiers in bringing his kingdom around because she's here now telling this story and changing the hearts of millions. Grandparents and great-grandparents, you have lived stories that you can share that will stir the hearts of change makers. You hear what I'm saying? You have lived some stuff. You have seen some things that I have never seen. When you share those stories, you think nobody wants to hear it? Some people don't. Forget them. They're not the ones that need to hear it. The ones that need to hear your stories are the ones that can make a difference. You are not too old to share your story. You are not too old to make a change in the hearts of change makers. Be encouraged when you get into good trouble for speaking truth power. Columnist Rashawn Ray wrote this when he wrote a piece about uh, John Lewis years ago. He said this. He said, speak up, speak out, get in the way, said John Lewis. He taught us the importance of speaking up and speaking out. We have to be willing to speak up about injustice always, no matter the costs. My grandfather, who served in two, world, or in two wars, earning a purple heart and bronze star, taught me from birth that my silence is my acceptance. Lewis stated this, When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to speak up. You have to say something. You have to do something. This motto should apply in all aspects of our lives. Lewis epitomizes it and encourages us not to be silent. He was adamant about supporting free speech, but he was also adamant about condemning hate speech. Lewis said this. He said, I believe in freedom of speech, but I also believe that we have an obligation to condemn speech that is racist, bigoted, anti-Semitic, or hateful. Jesus did this. Jesus spoke truth to power, and boy, did it get him in trouble. And he still didn't shy away from it, no matter how often it got him in trouble, even to the end. We should be encouraged and do likewise. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Living the gospel of Jesus Christ is not safe. If your gospel is predicated on an idea of your own security, it's not the gospel. The gospel is built on the idea of making yourself vulnerable for others. Be encouraged and do likewise. Every person of every age can do this. We can all make ourselves a little bit more vulnerable for someone else. And finally... Be encouraged and do not give up getting into good trouble just because it may make some things more difficult. Yes, there are consequences to getting into good trouble. Sometimes it makes other things more difficult. When I spoke up for the teachers during the recent contract negotiation, I stepped on some toes. Didn't realize I was doing that at the time. I've learned so since. I made some decision makers upset. That has made getting some other things done a little more difficult. And you know what? I do not care. That's okay. Do you want to know why? Because love will win. Yeah, it might be more difficult, but love's still going to win. So if you're out there and you think you're standing in my way, you're not. Because I've got Jesus on my side. I've got love on my side. And love will win. I would do it all again. And I am encouraged every time I speak to a teacher who saw or heard me and felt loved and supported. Be encouraged, y'all. When we get into good trouble for living the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can be encouraged because Jesus got into trouble first. Jesus got into trouble first 
we are in good company. I am thankful for those who have encouraged me in words and in actions throughout my ministry journey and throughout my life, really. When I was in eighth grade, I might have shared this story before, but I'm going to share it again because it is the ultimate example of how somebody encouraged me from afar. But without them, I'm not right here. When I was in eighth grade, I failed eighth grade. Missed like 57 days of school that year. Education was not a top priority for me. I was, I was at the downward part of my downward spiral. Failed eighth grade. The school I went to, Cleveland School of the Arts, had a policy back then. It was a magnet school. You had to audition to get in. They had a policy that if you were not upholding your end academically, that they would send you back to your public school. So by all rights, I should have been removed from that school and sent back to my public school. However, the director of music, Mr. William Woods, Dr. William Woods now, went to the administration and he said, this kid's home life is absolutely miserable. He has no support. He has nothing but us. We need to give him another chance because I think he can turn it around. And they let me stay. And wouldn't you know it, that next year I met who would become my best friend, started going to church because he needed a friend at church, got involved in a community there that understood my situation and how tough I was and loved me through it anyway. Which led me to go to church camp when I was 18, where I felt the first calls of pastoral ministry tingling back here. I had no idea what it meant to be a pastor then. But I thought, man, I want to be a pastor. Put that on the back burner for a long time. But here I am. Why? I'm here today because in part, a person stood up for me when others wanted to discard me. I am here because somebody was Jesus to me, even if I didn't know it. I am thankful for those who have encouraged me in word and action throughout my life. Nikki Gumbel, writer Nikki Gumbel said this, Be generous with encouragement. It is verbal sunshine. It warms the heart, costs nothing, and enriches lives. Hell yes, it does. Hell yes, it does. I hope that my example can be an encouragement to you to proclaim and live out the inclusive, all-encompassing love of Jesus Christ as well. I hope you've gotten a little verbal sunshine this morning. May your heart be warmed.